This is a walk cycle done by one of my students, and this is done by the same student. The second one's much more satisfying to watch. You have time to check out all the details. We're going to talk about how to create the illusion of movement without um, sacrificing the ability to really look at the details by scrolling the background. First of all, let's go over the different parts of a walk cycle. And then what we're going to do is you're just going to take any sort of packaging that you have that is dark colored um, cardboard to it, unless you happen to have some dark construction paper, and you're going to cut out a little puppet. So um, a lot of people have been saying to me, well, I don't have construction paper. I don't have any sort of um, cardboard I can cut out. Most food packaging, especially like cereal boxes and stuff, has different colors on it. So you might have more colored paper than you think you have lying around your house. Uh, anyway, I'm cutting out my little uh, person and it's gonna be um, different parts along all the joints. So a hand, an upper arm, a lower arm, they'd be three different pieces. Uh, the head, the body, those would be two different pieces. Um, it's a side view, so uh, notice the nose is sticking out the side and you see the mouth on the side. I used just a white marker to make the eye, but you could even cut a little hole um, to show where the eye is. There's the body. It almost looks like a little um, soda bottle in its shape. The person doesn't have to be completely realistic, but it has to be recognizable as a walking person from the side view. So, um, you know, play around with it. I mean, if you have um, pictures online you could use as a reference, and uh, but you know you can keep it simple you don't have to put a lot of detail in it um, it does have to be a dark color because you're going to be putting it on a white background and you need to be able to use the selection tool in order to um, to Photoshop it you're going to be using a, an app called Photopia on your Chromebook and it has to be a very different color from the background and it all has to be one solid color so now that I'm done creating my puppet, I'm going to need to photograph it um, using, um, using some sort of a stand so that my um, animation, um, so that the images are the same size. So I've set up this little uh, stand. It's just made out of a cardboard box with the sides cut out to let light in. And I've put my little figure under there and I can take a series of photographs um, of the different parts of the walk cycle. So I'm just going to take a couple of photographs but you really do need to take six photographs and the person needs to be in the correct positions of an actual walk cycle. I'm not doing that here. Um, I'm just I made them in two different positions because I just want to show you the process. So now I emailed them to myself and I'm now downloading them to my Chromebook. So they're in the download section of my Chromebook on my device. Now I'm opening up the app Photopia and I'm going to do file open and I'm going to open the two different um, puppets. Now what I'm going to do is I started out using the magic wand. I tried using the quick selection tool. None of those things work that great. So what I ended up doing was I did select color range. And then I just clicked my cursor over the person's body, over their face, over their, over their, um, over their body, and I clicked to make it that color is the color I'm selecting. So you can see I'm trying to select the background; it's not working so great. But when I go ahead and I do select color range, um, it's just selecting the black of the person. And because nothing else in the picture is that color, it's not selecting anything else. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, use the sliders to make it so that the background looks really black and the, um, the selected area looks really white. So there's a stark contrast. I'm not accidentally picking up gray pixels from the background. I just want the, the figure. And then I'm going to do edit cut. And I'm going to create a new document. It's going to be a print document. It's going to be letter sized and it's going to have a transparent background. So once I've created that, I'm going to paste my puppet into this new document and then I'm going to open up the other 
puppets for my walk cycle and I'm going to repeat the entire process. So here I'm pasting and now I'm going to open up my next puppet and then I'm going to do select color range. I'm going to make sure that the sliders are in the right position so that the background looks very black and the figure looks very white and that shows that I've just selected from the figure. I just click the cursor over the figure so that the, I, the computer knows that's the color range I'm selecting. I edit cut and I'm going to create a new document for print, letter size, transparent background, edit paste. And now I have two walk cycle puppets. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do edit copy on the one, select all edit copy on the one puppet. And then I'm going to go to the other puppet and I'm going to do edit paste and it'll paste the second puppet in a new layer on top of the first puppet. So what I'm going to have is these two puppets that are the same size um, in different layers, and I'm going to now take the Move tool and I'm going to line them up with each other. Now to see if I have created good frames for an animation, I need to test it first. Normally, because this is a walk cycle, I would have six different figures in six different positions in the order of a walk cycle. And I would rename every single layer, underscore A, underscore, and then the number of the layer. So it might be um, layer, you know, underscore A, underscore zero, underscore A, underscore um, one, etc. And once I have all the layers figured out, when you export it as a GIF, you'll see whether or not the figure is moving. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to click Export Layers, and you're going to export all the different layers. Um, it's going to ask you, uh, you get a pop-up window. You need to uncheck that first box, that top box, and you need to export them as PNGs. So each layer is going to be um, exported. It's going to be in a zip file called assets. You need to extract all, and then you'll see those two puppets in your downloads, and you need to put them into your Google Drive. Now remember, you're going to need the puppet in six different positions to correspond with the six different parts of the walk cycle. High point, contact, recall, both feet off the ground, passing, and then contact. The high point layer you're going to name underscore A underscore 01, and you're going to go from there until the last one, which is going to be 06 for contact, underscore A, underscore 06. If you want to use these layers to make a GIF, that is fine, but what I really need are the six separate layers because you're going to be using them in the WIC editor. So I need you to put those six layers into Google Classroom for me. I'm going to use some awesome artwork by my students in order to illustrate what I want. All this artwork I'm showing you because each student got a hundred on it. We're going to use techniques from past assignments to help us to grow as animators as we learn new concepts. And I would like you to use the WIC editor to make another animation with a scrolling background similar to the one that you created last time. Please make sure to include all the different parts of a walk cycle. For instance, it's very common for a student to leave out the passing step. That's the part of the walk cycle where the two legs are overlapping one another. Purpose of this assignment, I don't want you to use any copyrighted images. You have to create your own character. And I want the characters to be people, not animals. And I would like the character to stay in one place while the background moves rather than the other way around. You're going to create the illusion of movement by having the character stay in one place as the background scrolls by in the other direction. You're going to create this animation using a website called the WIC Editor. You're going to have to start out by using a website called Photopia. And you're going to have a stack of these puppets in different positions, and you're going to have to resize them to about four inches, and then you're going to export them as uh, PNGs. You're going to have a stack of PNGs. Um, we previously renamed them 01, 02, 03, etc. So now we're importing them into the WIC editor. And if you can see, the, um, they look like they're too big for this canvas. The way we're going to fix that is we're going to change the canvas from 720 to 1080. So the canvas will be bigger. Um, so we're just going to go frame by frame 
If you've used the Wick Editor before, you know that you turn on the onion skinning and you line up the figures. And we're going to keep the figures all in one spot so it looks like the guy is running in place. And when we're done positioning him and it looks like he's running in place, then we'll add another layer underneath for the, for the background. So I'm just going to rush through this part since it's just basically lining up the different frames. And when you're done with, I think I ended up having like 12 different figures, but when you're done with all 12 figures, uh, instead of starting at number one again, you just can go to the first frame and click on the figure and go C for copy and then go to add on another frame at the end and P for paste. So you're repeating the walk cycle over and over again. You want at least 24 frames, which is about two seconds of animation on the Wick editor. So when you're done and you have about 24 frames, um, just play it and make sure the person's walking forward and not backward. And then you're going to have to create a scrolling background so that this person who's jogging in place is going to look like he's moving forward and the city's passing by him. So let me just uh, rush through this part where we're adding the frames till we get to about 24. I'm going to play it, make sure it looks okay. I'm adding a second layer underneath and I'm now going to create the background in Photopia. If you go to my blog post on using the Wick editor, I have a blank scrolling background. You just have to scroll down to the bottom, click on it, you're going to um, download it, and then you're going to open it up in Photopia, and then you're going to start creating a background. I like to use the shift key and connect different points with straight lines. If you, um, if you draw by um, clicking on a spot and then um, while holding the shift key down, clicking on another spot, you can create straight lines and it's a great way to very quickly create a cityscape. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna create a real quick cityscape and then I'm gonna start filling the different parts of the city with, with color. Um, this is an assignment that we actually did in Photoshop at the very beginning of the year, but being that you guys are using um, Chromebooks with tracking pads and without a mouse, it's a heck of a lot easier to draw straight lines than it is to actually worry about creating a drawing in uh, Photopia. So I'm creating a drawing just using straight lines. A cityscape is the easiest way to do that. And then I'm going to make the um, faces of the building that are facing right towards me one color, the ones that are facing away from me a slightly darker color, and I think in one of the buildings you can see the top of the building, so that would be the lightest color of all because the light would be hitting it. I'm using the magic wand to create a, um, to select the sky area, and then I'm doing edit fill with a, with a blue color. Oh, if you want to select multiple areas, just a reminder, it's just like Photoshop. You hold the shift key down while using the magic wand and you can select multiple areas all at once. So I'm just doing a quick edit, uh, select edit fill. And I'm creating uh, the colors for the buildings and the colors for these sides of the buildings are going to be slightly darker. The color for the top of the one building is going to be slightly lighter. Um, this is very similar to Photoshop. So, um, you know, it's, it's, if you're used to Photoshop, everything looks almost the same. It doesn't work quite as well, but it's almost the same. So once I've done um, that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download the, I'm going to download it as a PNG. I'm just using my mouse to add a little bit of simple detail um, just for fun. And before I download it as a PNG, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create another layer, um, layer uh, new, and then I'm going to fill it with blue and I'm going to change the opacity um, so that I get sort of a blue haze in front of the building. And then I'm downloading it as a PNG. And the reason for that is if the background's too bright, it's going to interfere with us enjoying the characters. The background has to recede a little bit. That blue haze will help it recede. 
Now I'm going to um, create another layer underneath the top layer and I'm going to pull in my uh, my background. Um, so I import it and then I'm going to drag it onto the stage and what you're going to do is you're going to actually uh, duplicate that background many times um, one time for each frame that's in the in the foreground so um, it's going to be if there's 24 frames uh, there's going to be 24 backgrounds and what you can do is you're going to slide the background along a little bit in each frame so that it's going in the opposite direction of the figure so it's going to look like the um, the figure is passing by all these buildings as he's running when really he's running in place but that illusion is going to be very convincing so you can see how the buildings are scrolling by as he's running and that way we're able to enjoy the detail of the character um, and still get the sense of movement so you want to line it up so that the the last frame the uh, the the uh, city doesn't go off the edge. You don't want to have any white showing. And then just play it to make sure it looks right. And when you export it, you're actually going to export it as an MP4. Um, I actually named the project first. Just go to those little gear, that gear icon, and you're going to name it, and you're going to export it as an MP4. You may also, if you want to, export it as a GIF, but um, for our purposes, for this class, we really do need the MP4. So now I have my running figure. Um, that's the GIF, but let me go ahead and export the MP4. And he looks a little drunk, but this is our little guy running. No matter how far he runs, he never runs off the page. 